Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are on chapter seven, random variables. Now, if you're watching this video, that means, ladies and gentlemen, you have gone to Schoology and you have clicked on this video right here. Uh, right above this video is table A. Remember, table A is the Z scores. Um, I'm not actually going to use the Z table as I do this video. I am going to use the calculator, but if you want to use this Z table, okay, from chapter two, uh, you can go and use this if you prefer. But I think most of you, if not 100% of you, are probably going to want to use the calculator like I'm going to use it. All right, so let us get rolling on chapter seven. So here we go. All right, so chapter seven is dealing some more with some probability, random variables and probability. And a lot of probability, obviously, is in casinos, okay? So this is the game of craps. Uh, if we were in the classroom, we would actually play this game and figure out the probabilities of craps. But with being in distance learning, we're not going to do that. So let's keep right on rolling here. All right, so we're going to be rolling, we're going to be talking about the probability with a pair of dice, okay, a pair of die. And here are all the outcomes. Remember, this is the sample space. So you might roll a 1-1, one, one, a 1-2, one, a 1-3, one, and so on. So this is the visual of that. All right. On page 465 in your book, it talks about what is a random variable. A random variable is a variable whose value is a numerical outcome of a random phenomenon. All right, remember you have the power of pause and rewind, so if I go too fast and you need to write things down, you might want to use the pause button. Okay, I'm going to keep right on going. On page 466, it talks about discrete random variables. Okay, discrete. Now, what is discrete? Okay, put this in your notes, please. A discrete random variable x has a countable number of possible values. The probability distribution of a discrete random variable x lists the values and their probabilities. Okay, and I'm going to go over an example of what this looks like here on the next slide. So here we've got the top row is the possible values and then the bottom row is the probability of each of those values. All right, so whoops. So the probability P sub I must satisfy two requirements. Okay, remember, this is our probability rules. One, every probability is a number between zero and one. Okay, they all have to be a number between zero and one. The sum of those probabilities has to add up to one. Okay, all of the sample space and their probabilities must add up to one. Find the probability of any event by adding the probabilities up of the particular values that make up the event. Okay, so let's take a look. So the probability distribution for the sum of two die, okay, this is the relative frequency. Okay, remember relative frequency is the probability. All right, so if you think about a die, ladies and gentlemen, okay, let me go back to this picture here for a second. We're talking about the sum, right? So the smallest sum is going to be two. Because if you roll a one, one, that sum is a two. Okay, and then the next sum is a three, four, five, and then the largest sum, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be 12. So the sums go from two to 12. All right, so let me fill that top row in and please do the same in your notes. So we might get a sum of two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Whoops. Those are all of the possible sums when you roll a die or two dice. All right. Now, the probability, ladies and gentlemen, okay, well, actually, how do I want to do this? Um, so I'm going to do uh, 
First, I'm going to do the fraction form, then I'll do the decimal form, okay? So there is, first of all, if we look, remember there are 36 outcomes, okay? There are six ways to roll the first die. There are six ways to roll the second die. There are 36 outcomes, okay? If you count all of these up, there are 36 of them. All right, and there's only one way that you can roll a sum of two. There are two ways you can roll a sum of three. There are three ways, look diagonally, there are three ways to roll a sum of four. There are four ways to roll a sum of five, and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and put those fractions in. All right, so here we go. So this first one is one out of 36. And then this is two out of 36, three out of 36, four ways of rolling a five out of 36 five ways here okay six ways here now that's the most okay six out of 36 now it starts to go back down again a sum of eight five out of 36 a sum of nine four out of 36 a sum of 10 three out of 36 and so on okay now that's the fraction form that's the relative frequency Okay, uh, now the decimals are a little bit lengthy here. So if I take, you know, one and divide it by 36, I'm going to get this big old long decimal. Well, I'm going to round all of these to, to three decimal places. Okay, so one out of 36 and then two out of 36 and so on. So I'm going to round all of these to three decimal places and I'm going to use my rounding rules. All right, so this is going to be, let's switch colors here. This is going to be 0 0.028. This is going to be 0 0.056. 0 0.083. 0 0.167, and then it starts to go back down again, 0 0.139, 0 0.111, 0 0.083, 0 0.056, and 0 0.028. Right now, I could, if I wanted to ask you about the, um, the percent, so if I wanted you to give me it as a percent, so there's about, about, a 2.8% chance of rolling a sum of two. Okay, here this would be about 16.7% chance of rolling a sum of seven. Okay, but again, most of the time we leave them as decimals or fractions. All right, so just talking about uh, the game of craps for a little bit. So to win on the first roll, okay, if you don't know the rules, uh, to win on the first roll, ladies and gentlemen, is to roll a sum of 7 or 11. Okay, well, 7 is the 6 out of 36, right? And the 11 is, well, actually, let me rewrite this in, a, in the appropriate notation. So let me back this up. So I'm going to rewrite this as the probability that X, okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, this is X. This is considered X, okay, that top row. X equals 7 plus, because remember, or means to add, plus the probability that X equals 11, I guess I'm just going to use the decimal form, folks. So that means I will take the 0.167 and add the 0 0.056. So that's going to be approximately 
three. So that's your chance of winning the game right away. Okay, again, in the, in the game of craps at the casino, if you roll a seven or 11 on the first roll, you win. So you have a little over a 22% chance of winning the game on the first roll. Okay, but when you lose, ladies and gentlemen, when you lose on the first roll, that means you're going to roll a 2, a 3, or a 12. Okay, you automatically lose in that game. So let me rewrite this. So that means if you roll the probability of, a, or if you roll a sum of 2, remember or means again to add, plus the probability of rolling a 3, plus the probability of rolling a 12, Okay, again, I'm just going to use the decimal forms. That would be 0 0.028 plus the probability of rolling a 3.056 plus 0 0.028. So automatically losing, automatically losing on the first roll by rolling one of those is 0.112. Now, if you don't know the rules of craps, go read it. It's in your book. Okay, the rules for craps is in your book. Now, your chance of not losing on the first roll. Okay, remember this deals with the complement rule. So not losing now would be this. Okay, we would take one minus the probability that you roll a sum now notice it doesn't say win, it just says don't lose. You don't lose. So you might win or you might have to play it again because you didn't lose automatically. So that means a sum of two or three or 12. Okay, let me rewrite that now. So that means I'm gonna go one minus the probability that x equals 2 plus the probability that x equals 3 plus the probability that x equals 12. And that's 1 minus the last answer we got, 0. 0.112, which is 0. 0.888. So your chance of not losing doesn't mean you win, but not losing on that first roll is almost 89%. All right, so that's how we can use our table. And again, read the rules for the game. If you don't know where I got, where I got this, this from, go read the rules in your book. All right, what else do we do with this? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we also make histograms out of this. All right, remember our histograms? Okay, remember histograms, the bars touch. We're using relative frequency here because we're using the decimal form. We're not using frequency. We're using relative frequency. So that's either the decimal form the fraction form or the prob the percent form. Okay, here we're gonna use the decimal form. So I'm just going to approximate. So the sum of rolling a two uh, goes a little above 0 0.02. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a bar go up a little past that over and back down again. Okay, and now I'm gonna try to do the best job that I can on this. I was not satisfied with that because I didn't go far enough over. Okay, there we go. All right, now the three, again, that was 0 0.056. So I'm gonna go a little bit past the halfway point like this. Okay, so again, this was 0 0.028. This one is 0 0.056. Okay, now the sum of four is 0 0.083, so I'm going to go up a little past the 0 0.08, over and back down again, 0 0.083. All right, five was up to 0 0.111, one, 
So like right about there. Again, I'm just doing the best that I can freehand. Okay, the six goes up to 1.139. That's almost to 0.14. Back down again, 0.139. 7 goes up to 0 0.167. Ooh, that was a that one was not very good. Sorry about that. I'm going to just leave it though. Okay, 0 0.167. And then it starts coming down again. And this histogram, ladies and gentlemen, should be perfectly symmetric. Okay, it should be perfectly symmetric. And the bar should be the same width. Okay, that's sometimes that's kind of hard to do, especially when I'm writing on a computer screen. But there's the histogram for the sum of the two dice. The relative frequency histogram. Again, relative frequency histogram. All right. Again, if I went too fast, go ahead and pause it and go ahead and get your histogram made. All right, continuing. Now, sometimes you're given other scenarios, like a die is loaded in such a way that the probability of getting a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 are half, 1, 6, 1, 12, 1, 12, and 1, 12, respectively. Okay, well, that means, okay, um, it's a... It's not a fair die, right? It's loaded, okay? That's what but loaded means. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my top row, which is uh, rolling a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. And then the probabilities go on the bottom. So I'm just going to leave these in fraction form this time. So I'm going to go ahead, okay, the probability of rolling a 1 is a half. The probability of rolling a 2 is 1 sixth. And then we got 1 12th, 1 12th, 1 12th, and 1 12th. Okay, let's see. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. I think I was missing a number in there, but I think we're good. I think that last one was 1 12th. Let's make sure. Remember, these are supposed to add up to 1. So let's just make sure really quick with our calculator. So I'm going to go ahead and take that half plus, let's see, what was the next one? See my mind? Sometimes forget things quickly. Uh, let's see, one-sixth. Okay, got it. All right. So I'm going to add one-sixth, and then I'm going to add one-twelfth. Actually, I'm going to click on the screen to do this because I can do it faster. Okay, plus one twelfth, and one more, plus one twelfth. Now, those are supposed to add up to one. Oh, thank goodness they do. Okay, so yes, I do have those uh, incorrectly. One, twelve, one half, one sixth, one twelfth, one twelfth, one twelfth, one twelfth. Okay, remember, they're supposed to add up to one, and they're between zero and one. All right, so now this question is, what is the probability that X is greater than three and a half? Well, greater than three and a half, ladies and gentlemen, that would be the probability that X equals four plus the probability that X equals five. Please get used to writing out this notation like this, okay? Plus the probability of X equaling six. So that would be the one twelfth plus the one twelfth plus the one twelfth, which is three twelfths which reduces to one-fourth. So the probability in this scenario of rolling uh, greater than three and a half is going to be one-fourth. One out of four times that's gonna happen with this die. Okay, the probability of a number from two to less than 4.2. Well, again, in this situation, what does that mean? That means the probability, now two is included, rolling a two, rolling a three, and rolling a four. Okay, so this would be one-sixth plus one-twelfth 
plus one twelfth. And that is going to give us one third. Okay, I saved a little bit of time there on that one. If you add those up and reduce it, you should get one third. Now, this next question, what is the, find the smallest number A for which the probability is greater than 0.6? Okay, well, first of all, 0.6, ladies and gentlemen, is the same as 6 tenths, right? 0.6 is the same as 6 tenths. And if I reduce that, let's see, 2 goes into that 3 times, so that would be the same as 3 fifths, okay? The same as 3 fifths. Well, I don't know if that's going to help me or not. So I want to know, well, what does A have to be? What does A have to be for this to be true? Okay, what does that A have to be? Well, I need to find two numbers, and it has to be less than A. Well, I'm going to start, obviously, with a half. That's, that's rolling a one. Okay, rolling a one is a half. Well, one half is less than three-fifths, right? So let's go with the next number is one-sixth. So let's see, what's one half plus one-sixth? Well, let's see, one half plus one-sixth, ladies and gentlemen, um, that would be, as a decimal, that would be 0.667. Now, oh, that's greater than 0 0.06, isn't it? Okay. So adding the first two together, that is bigger, whoops, not 0 0.06, 0 0.6. That is bigger than 0 0.6. So the answer to this, ladies and gentlemen, is a 2. You're going, what? Okay, look. Come on, move up. Active Inspire is being grumpy here. See, if I added these two together, that was bigger than 0.6. So that means the A is going to be 2. So the answer is A equals 2. So the probability that X is less than 2 is greater than 0.6. So you just had to do a little math there. You had to do some adding. And you got to watch your inequality. All right, moving on. All right, continuous random variables. Now, again, those were discrete. Remember, discrete is countable. Continuous, found on page 473, a continuous random variable x takes all the values in an interval of numbers. The probability distribution of X is described by a density curve. Oh, going back to chapter 2. The probability of an event is the area under the density curve. Now remember, it doesn't have to be a normal curve. It could be any shape, which we'll see. And above the values of X that make up the event. Okay, so pause that so you can get it written down. I'm going to keep going. All right, so for example, a spinner. Okay, a spinner is continuous because it could land anywhere, right? Notice it goes 0, 1 fourth, 1 half, 3 fourths. So what's the probability that it will land less than 0.25? Okay, well, landing less than 0.25, okay, well, that would have to be somewhere in here, right? Well, that would be 0.25. Okay, could land anywhere in there. From 0 to 1 fourth, the chances are 0.25. It's like the area. What's the area? Okay, now notice this one says equal to. Okay, I'm going to blow this back up again, make it bigger. There we go. Now, this says equal to, folks. Now, I want you to make note of this right here. The probability of individual outcomes with continuous random variables is always zero. You cannot find an individual outcome for a continuous random variable. Well, you can, but it's always zero. Okay, that's for continuous. All right. 
because again with continuous it's an interval like in this right here okay let's look at some more let's keep going so here ladies and gentlemen we have I, I guess we could call this a density curve even though it's not a curve I guess it's a density square we have a square right here right and well you notice that it goes from 0 to 1 and here it goes from 0 to 1 so the area of the whole thing equals one. Well, the area from point three to point seven, okay, the area from here to here is point four. All right, let's look at another shape. Uh, same shape, but different areas. So the area from 0 to 0.5 is 0.5, which would be the probability of landing in that section. Okay, remember area and probability mean the same thing. We did that in Chapter 2. Okay, from 0.8 to 1, the area is 0.2. These are in your book. Remember, read your book. Okay, here is a rectangle. No, a rectangle. A triangle. Silly, Mr. Ellering. Okay, here's a triangle. Remember, the area for a triangle is base times height divided by 2. Well, the base here, ladies and gentlemen, the base is 2, right? So 2 times the height, which is 1, divided by 2. Well, that's the same as 2 divided by 2, which is 1. So the area of this triangle is 1. Remember, the area underneath that density curve is 1. And remember, the probabilities of a whole um, sample space adds up to 1. Okay? Rule number, is it rule number 1? The probabilities add up to 1. It's either rule one or rule two. I can't think right off the top of my head, but one of those rules. All right, here we go. Going back to chapter two, reviewing the normal distribution and the normal density curve. All right, so we've got our normal curve. Remember the area underneath this curve equals one, always, always equals one, okay? So this is for a normal distributions. Also probability are also probability distributions. Remember this notation. The N stands for normal. The mu stands for the mean. And the sigma stands for the standard deviation. Okay. So having a mean mu and a standard deviation of sigma. Okay. Also remember only interval values have positive probabilities remember the z score z equals x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation we're going to be using this a lot in the second half of the book and it's going to evolve depending upon the situation okay we're going to be using the z score left and right you need to know it like you need like you know the back of your hand folks you need to know it really well all right here we go so quick review so i want to know now remember the z score is standardizing it and when you're looking at the normal curve the zero is the standardized value for the mean okay and then one two three to the right one two and three to the left now this is 1.42 so i'm going to say this is right about here nope not quite let me move that over a little bit more right about here is 1.42 i'm going to say that that is 1.42 and the inequality says less than now i could use table a if i wanted to Okay, I'd have to go to the positive side. I'd need to go to 1.42, which is right. 1.4 is here. 0.2 is here. So I would go across until I meet 0.9222. Okay, now remember, if you're going to use the table, it only gives the values to the left. 
Okay, but I'm going to use the calculator the rest of the way here. Okay, that was just a quick recap of you doing that. So the area is 0.9222. But remember how we do this with the calculator. All right, so write this down. But never, ever, ever include calculator notation on a test, even mine. You can use the calculator, but don't write the calculator notation. So remember how this works. Okay, I'm not going to actually physically write it up here. I'm just going to go to on, on the calculator. So on the calculator, remember we go second VARS. Okay, let me repeat. Second VARS. We never use number one. We always use number two. Normal CDF. Normal cumulative distribution function. So we pick number two. Okay, now remember the lower value, I'm just going to use negative, I shaded to the left. So my lowest, my low value, I'm just going to say negative 100. Okay, negative 100 is my low value. So negative 100. You could put any low value, really low value there. It doesn't have to be negative 100. My upper value Okay, well, that's the 1.42. So 1.42. Whoops, I accidentally hit the 5. So 4.2. Now, the mean is 0 because that's where it's already normalized. The standard deviation is 1, and we're going to paste it. And voila, look, ladies and gentlemen, if we round it four decimal places, please round four decimal places, 0.9222. And that's what the table gave us. All right, let's keep going. Almost done here. All right, in this case, we've got the probability that Z, remember that's a Z now, Z score, is greater than 0.86. All right, so again, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to put 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. 0.86, uh, it's right about here. Okay, looks good enough. And it's greater than. Now, if I was going to use the table, I would have to, if I was going to use the table, this is where I'd have to go 1 minus whatever I look up. But with the calculator, I don't need to do that. With the calculator... 0.86 is now my low bound. So let me go again, second bars, number two. My low value is the 0.86. My upper value, I'm just going to go ahead and put 100 in there because it's shaded all the way to the right. So I'm just going to use a big value for the upper value. Again, I'm going to leave the mu as 0 because it's standardized and the standard deviation as 1. Paste it. And voila, ladies and gentlemen, 0.1949. Okay, 0.1949. All right. Okay, next one. Between negative 1.76 and 0.58. So again, I'm going to go ahead and go 0, 1, 2, 3. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay, negative 0.67. I'm going to say that that's right about here. Um, I'm going to do it here. And then 0 0.58. I'm going to say that that's right about here. And uh, it's going to shade in between. So this is my lower bound, ladies and gentlemen. This is my upper bound. All right. So negative 1.76. And the upper bound is 0.58. And voila, 0 0.6798, 0 0.6798. So that's the area or 
the probability of landing in that section or between that. Okay, remember, area and probability are interchangeable. Okay? All right, I think that was it. Oh, we're going to end with this one. Okay, so end chapter 7 one notes here. All right, so we got a little bit of work to do. So if the mean is 360 and the standard deviation is 50, then what does what does the probability of x greater than 400 equal? All right, so that means we got to use our z-score. So we're going to go z equals 400 minus 360 divided by 50. So that would be 40 divided by 50. And 40 divided by 50 is, okay, I should be able to do, I believe that is 0.8. Yes, 0.8. All right, so 0.8. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this. Please, I'm teaching you how to write statistics here. It's like English class, okay? So we need to rewrite this as the probability that Z is greater than 0.8. Okay, rewrite that with the Z. All right, now I'm gonna go to my picture and always draw a picture, always. Okay, don't go, I don't need to draw, no. You need to draw a picture. We're doing, we're gonna start doing formal statistics here and you need pictures. We need that visual. Okay, so 0.8, it's right about here and it's greater than, so I'm gonna shade this way. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and use my calculator. So this is my, 0.8 is my lower bound. And my upper, since I shaded all the way to the right, is 100. All right, so let's finish this up. Second vars, number two. 0.8 is my lower bound. 100 is my upper bound. Leave those as zero and one, and go ahead and paste. And so the area, or the probability is 0 0.2119, 0 0.2119. And yes, I want you going four digits on that. All right, again, half of this lesson was from chapter two because we're gonna be using that uh, a lot from here on out. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that video was a little longer than I wanted it to be, but We've got it done. Now if I can just figure out how to turn it off. All right, ladies and gentlemen. See you in class. Bye.